Alors, je crois qu'on va pouvoir commencer notre... I think we're going to be able to start tonight's meeting. Thank you to everyone for being here. I'm just going to just check on how we're doing uh, in terms of technical. Has everyone who wants to hear in English got connected to the English interpreting channel? Can you hear us in English? Piotr is nodding. And Angelina, have you been able to hear us in English translation? And Anastasia, can you hear the English translation? Is the translation working for you, Anastasia? I can't see Angelina on my screen right now. I can't see Angelina right now. Is she is she still with us? Angelina, are you still with us? Je vous vois pas à l'écran. Si vous êtes là, est-ce que vous pouvez me faire... I can't see you on the screen, Angelina. If you're here, could you make yourself known to us? Angelina n'est pas là. It looks like Angelina is not connected to the meeting. Je pense qu'il y a... I'm guessing that the internet connection is somewhat unstable. Angelina was with us, but I think she may have lost her connection. I hope she will join us. So let's start. Well, thank you to everyone who's here who's been able to connect. Let me just remind you in a few words why we're here together this evening. As you all know, since the 8th of March, we've had a very strong and friendly contacts with our colleagues who are in Ukraine. Uh, Angelina Savivitska and Anastasia Shinyshenko, who, who are trying to join us in this meeting today. Also with Piotr Ripson, who is my counterpart as uh, chair of ICOM Poland, and who is uh, working as a very precious intermediary for us in order to support us as we try to help our friends in Ukraine. The first thing that I wanted to, to say to Anastasia and to Angelica and to Piotr uh, is to tell you how sensitive we are to the situation that you find yourselves in. We want to be useful and support you through actions that are useful to you. And that's why, uh, as we did on the 8th of March, we've we're, wanted to contact you to think together about what we can do in order to uh, host and welcome Ukrainian museum pro professionals in France, if that seems uh, useful and necessary. For other of our uh, colleagues, uh, just to tell you a few words, so we're joining together we, we joined together on, on Zoom on the 8th of March, and our Ukrainian and Polish friends said to us that they are wanting, on one hand, uh, money, and secondly, uh, the materials and equipment necessary to, to protect heritage items that are in danger. So we know how important heritage is and how much uh, heritage can be under threat uh, in a time of a war which aims to destroy the identity of a people. Heritage is under threat in any conflict, but uh, our museums in France have wanted to respond very qu quickly in donating equipment and material to protect artworks. We've sent two trucks loads to the uh, Polish-Ukrainian border. Uh, the, the, the trucks are arriving shortly and uh, thanks to Piotr and our uh, uh, other contacts, uh, Heri and uh, Vasil. Uh, I don't know if they're with us this afternoon. Uh, the the trucks are are, are being uh, unloaded and transferred into another truck uh, to go across the border and take these uh, materials to the museums in Ukraine. Uh, our French. Uh, French 
a transport company is not going to cross the border because that would be too uh, dangerous for them. They don't know the, the region well. So the first thing I want to say is to thank all of you who have got involved in supporting this action. Thank you to all of the museums. I think 20 or 30 museums in France uh, became mobilized to, to, to make donations. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us today. We want to thank the transport company and all of the friends who uh, got involved, uh, uh, friends from Icon France, friends from Icon International. I want to uh, greet uh, friends from Icon Europe who drew together uh, different Icon uh, bodies across Europe to enable us to map uh, the different actions that are being able to be put in place during this conflict. Uh, I want to also greet uh, the organization Bouclier Bleu France. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're with us, but they've uh, enabled to help uh, museums connect together and identify some needs. And our work wouldn't have been so effective without them. Thank you to the committee members of the Bouclier Bleu organization, in particular, Anne-Laure uh, Rameau and also May Corsolo, who is uh, chair of that organization. As we start this meeting today, we're not going to talk about a huge number of things. We're going to talk about one specific thing. We're going to talk about which uh, French museums are in the position to welcome uh, museum position uh, professionals in France. So we're going to uh, ask our Ukrainian friends to talk to us about the needs that they are aware of. We'll also ask Piotr to tell us about the needs that he's aware of. We won't necessarily hear everything, but I think it's very good to hear a certain amount of information. We've also uh, uh, invited people who are responsible for the French program called PAUSE. It's a program which, to a great extent, is managing the funding that is donated by the French government in order to welcome Ukrainian refugees in France. I'm going to, I want to greet Eleonore de la Bille Rochette, who is with us. Perhaps Aliza Menchikova is with us. I, I don't know if Aliza has been able to join the, me the meeting. Elisa uh, speaks Ukrainian, which uh, can help the uh, relationships and the communication. Thank you to both of you. We'll hear from them very shortly. I'm also going to uh, ask Fabien Brut from uh, the French Ministry of Culture to speak to us, and uh, he will be able to talk about what the uh, French Ministry of Culture can put in place alongside this program. I also wanted to mention the conversation that we had with people from the uh, international uh, program uh, for arts in France. It's, I'm going to stop chatting uh, uh, there. Uh, I was filling time a little bit as people join us, but uh, I want to hand straight over to Anastasia. Uh, Anastasia, can I ask you, how are you doing? How is daily life for you at the moment? Is it useful for you, for French museums to work together to welcome museum professionals uh, that you might know? What would you be asking us uh, for today? Uh, and I'm afraid Angelica, uh, Angelino is not with us, but Anastasia, you're with us. If Anastasia, we'd like to speak to us now. We'd love to hear from you. Um, hello, thank you so much uh, for such opportunity to to speak about uh, our needs and uh, thank you so much for your support. It's very, very important for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Ecom of uh, France. Um, if I can, uh, uh, can I share some um, uh, some presentation, it would be more easier. Uh, I, I should get permission for, uh, for screen sharing. Yes, it should be possible to do screen sharing. Mm -hmm. Anastasia, yeah. go for it. I think yeah. you should be able to share your screen. Uh, do we, uh, 
Do you can you uh, can you see it? Yes, yes, Anastasia, we see. Tout we à see fait. Mm -hmm. okay. Tout à fait bien. Anastasia, on voit très bien. Merci. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, um, if I I would like to uh, to say uh, some words. What we are working right now uh, in UK, in Ukraine. Actually, uh, our museum needs in Ukraine are changing according to the war situation. Uh, museums uh, in the temporarily occupied territories. Uh, we can uh, talking about uh, right now uh, about financial support for museum staff, and we should very carefully and even delicate because they cannot uh, show that they are cooperating with the Ukrainian institution. Unfortunately, our uh, museum colleagues uh, in this uh, territory um, in extremely danger. Uh, the other situation uh, uh, at museums under intense shelling and fighting near uh, Kharkiv, it's East Ukraine and Mikolaev, uh, for example, it's South Ukraine. It's also uh, needed financial support for museum staff and also materials for the preservation of collection and buildings as well, because the new shell and dangers is emerging. Um, also, uh, it's needed financial support uh, for museum staff who are temporarily moving uh, to the safe, uh, more or less safe territory of Western Ukraine. So we don't speak about refugees, we, uh, we speak about uh, so-called uh, temporarily uh, displayed uh, people. And uh, um, the, uh, another um, part of our territory, it's uh, regions that were liberated. They uh, suffered from fighting between uh, Ukrainian and uh, uh, Russian troops and shelling. Of course, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, northern regions. It's uh, right uh, here at Kiev, Chernihiv, and Sumy, and so on. And there are many damages, a lot of damages in Chernihiv. Uh, of course, there are needed uh, uh, materials for collection and conservation buildings. Uh, therefore, we need also specialists. Uh, uh, restoration to work with buildings, also restoration to work with collection. And in the, this case, um, uh, we uh, needed this uh, specialist more and more because it's so large number of facilities and objects. And right now we don't, uh, don't have enough specialists right now. And in the future, we will need a lot of programs uh, within uh, and trains uh, for restoration. Uh, for example, how to deal with objects uh, that have suffered from a prolonged stay in package uh, during transportation from different kinds of uh, uh, destruction, etc. So, in the future, it would be like huge problem uh, with this uh, specialist and with this uh, kind of program and uh, uh, trainings about this. And also, I would like to um, tell you about uh, we're working and uh, in a few days, uh, I hope we ended this platform for cooperation and mutual assistance. Uh, this is uh, this platform. Um, uh, actually, uh, the main goal of this plot for, uh, platform, uh, they're displayed uh, for uh, needs and proposition uh, for museums uh, needs, as you can see. And uh, for, for right for now, uh, for my side, it's it's all. If you have any questions, let me know, please. Thank you. Oh.
Merci beaucoup, Anastasia. De... Thank you very much, Anastasia. Thank you for this presentation. I think it's really important uh, that you have been able to tell us of the needs that exist now and the, the needs that might come up in the future in order to preserve and restore your collections. You mentioned the need for training when the situation allows it. Today, one of the questions that we wanted to ask, and we'll also ask uh, Piotr Ripsa, and we'll ask uh, Angelina as well if she is able to connect, is Anastasia, Piotr, via the platform that you're putting in place or through other means, is, is there a space for professional museum staff and professionals who would like to move to France, be welcomed in France, and perhaps receive training in France, perhaps come to work with museums in France. Is, is there a network or is there a way that would enable us to identify those museum professionals who would like to come and be welcomed as refugees by uh, museums in France. That's one of the aims of our meeting tonight. We want to be able to organize ourselves as museums in France to help welcome uh, museum professionals who would like to come to France. I am asking you, Anastasia, but I'll ask the same question to, to Piotr as well, and, and we'll ask Angelina if she's able to connect with us as well. So, so if I understood, understood correctly, uh, we um, should um, think about some uh, Ukrainian uh, museum expert who are refugee right now, yes, and they willing to, to go to the France for work in museum uh, in, uh, in in museums. Um, for for this purpose, uh, we should uh, to think about and uh, to. Oui, Am I correct? Oui, c'est bien cela. C'est bien cela. La réunion de. Yes, it's exactly that. That's exactly right. This meeting today is here to listen to you, to listen to the different needs that you're expressing. You've already talked about some of this. We've uh, got a colleague uh, who's just joined the meeting, uh, somebody from uh, Bouquier Bleu France, and uh, we'll perhaps pass on to her the list of needs that you've expressed. But one of the key objectives for our meeting today is uh, for the French museums who are here to to, to listen to you and, and hear whether there are any Ukrainian museum professionals who would like to come and work in French museums during this period. If, if you don't know anyone who's in that situation today, it's not a problem, Anastasia, mm -hmm. but uh, if, if you don't know anyone in that situation, we can hear from the people who would run the programs and, and who would be able to say uh, what they could do for you. Anastasia, do you, do you want to tell us of anyone or would you like to, to perhaps hear from other people in the meeting about their programs? Yeah, yeah. sorry, no, uh, right now I don't know uh, such, uh, such of people. Um, we can uh, think about it and uh, ask our museum colleagues but right now, I don't, uh, I don't know such people. Je vous remercie beaucoup, Angelina. Thank you very much, Anastasia. Angelina, I think you're here. Angelina, we can't see you, but I, I can see uh, that you're with us uh, with a screen named Redmi Note. Can I hand over to you? Uh, dear Juliet, dear colleagues, we appreciate your initiative to support Ukraine, to support Ukrainian museum. So 56 days of war showed that there is no safe place in Ukraine anymore. Even in Lviv, 
that lies far from the war zone. Uh, three days ago, five rockets struck Lviv, bringing random deaths to seven civilians. And the sites where rockets landed are less than four kilometers from cluster of museum buildings, of our museum buildings that are scattered mainly in the central part of the city. And um, from the beginning of this war, we have uh, um, fundamentally revised our tasks and our plans. And so currently we have concentrated our intention and our efforts mainly on the issues of preservation of collections that all now are hidden in our storage places, in our repositories. And we um, focus mainly on their physical protection, security, and also informational preservation as well. Now our major strategy is to speed up and make more effective process of digitizing of all museum holdings. Actually, we have intensified simultaneous the digitization of collections of different groups, the manuscripts and all printed books, archives, also our inventory registrars documentation. Um, and uh, fulfillment of this task, the task of digitalization of collections became uh, possible in the, with this effectiveness only due to the big support that we received now during the war from our friends from the whole Europe. And we were nicely surprised and it was really very, very big um, moral support for us. And I would like to express our real gratitude and acknowledgement to our colleagues in Poland, Polish, especially Polish Committee for Help to Ukrainian Museums, Swedish National Museum, National Museum on Finland, uh, National Gallery of Finland, also Jewish Museum in Vienna, and Austrian ICOM, Center for Humanitarian Dialogue in Italy, International Building Center in Warsaw, Shiptitsky Family Foundation. So this list is really very, very long. A number of uh, foundations in Switzerland, uh, Foundation of Alif, House of Europe, um, Saving Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Online. And due to um, this big help, we received a lot of packing materials, conservation materials, conservation devices and tools equipment for storage muse museum uh, holdings and devices for climate control, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, purificators, etc. And now uh, we are waiting for modernized video surveillance system and security alarm system. And also we await for equipment for repository of graphic collections and textiles. And uh, really, we have received a lot of scanners, uh, cameras, computers. This uh, technique is very, very important for us. And delivery of this material and equipment to the museum was organized by volunteers who um, brought them from border to, to Lviv and to museum. And uh, that's why now we have uh, understand that one of the practical, really practical problems is our um, automobile park in the museum. So far as we have, it is old, outdated, and uh, we have constantly to um, mend it, to repair it. And uh, in the situation when we need to be mobile, me, when we need uh, to be quick to transport different uh, materials or museum objects from one building from our location. In Lviv, we have eight lo different locations in the central part of the city, and we have to um, have nice and quick communications between these buildings. So we need uh, microbus. That is one of our um, real uh, need for today. It, it, we speak about uh, protection, security of collections, and optimal service of these collections. And uh, what concerns uh, such a wonderful offering to host museum personnel in France, it's really a very great uh, proposal, but now it is impossible in our museum with our staff uh, 
maybe in the future, if such proposals will occur, we will be, it will be really great practice to share experience, to share knowledge, to communicate with each other. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Angelina, de, de Thank you, de... Angelina, for this testimony. Uh, this uh, really uh, brings a useful compliment to the list of what you need right now. And your needs are evolving over time and are becoming more specific. Of course, uh, we do understand that and we can hear from uh, both your contributions that there's a need for training and specialist uh, training in uh, restoring restoring the collections and then you've got much more specific needs in terms of surveillance equipment digitization equipment we can feel that you are uh, working to safeguard your heritage and this is your main concern uh, i would now like to speak to piotr uh, because as you uh, understood one of the objectives were targeting for this meeting is to understand if beyond these var various uh, material needs that we are, of course, taking on board. I'm sure that all the professionals who are uh, online today can hear these needs and will be in touch with you to try to respond to your needs for the best uh, in, uh, in the current period. So, Piotr, as um, you are currently uh, very concretely welcoming refugees from Ukraine. Can you tell us what you know? Uh, uh, do you have any contacts with museum professionals who would need to be welcomed into French museums? Perhaps this is what we can try to, um, to focus on for the next uh, couple of minutes. Uh, Piotr, over to you. Okay, th thank you. I'll <clears throat> try to be brief. Uh, I'm Piotr Ripson and I'm the chair of uh, ICOM Poland and we started to organize some uh, help program already in February this uh, this year, at the end of February, where uh, when, when Russia started war on the Ukraine. And the, the aim of our action was focused particularly on the displaced people, displaced museum professionals who found themselves in Poland. Uh, we have over, I think, two and a half million uh, refugees right now in the country from Ukraine. So, so there is um, obviously a number of scholars, museum professionals, art historians, archaeologists in that um, huge group, most often women with children, because most men stayed in the country to defend uh, their cities and their homeland. So the target group is really museum professionals who are displaced in Poland, very often leaving in a hurry with a luggage uh, consisting of a suitcase and two kids and maybe a dog. So in a, you know, safe uh, from war, but in a very difficult existential position. So we decided to um, organize um, funding and at the same time a, a small office which we were able to raise with the help of um, our ICOM secretariat in Paris and uh, uh, Sophie is here. Thank you very much again Sophie for that initial uh, help which uh, helped us to establish an office which is Ukrainian and Polish speaking and to start I think the most difficult part with which Juliette uh, was talking about identifying the people because it's not that you know that you have a queue of people queues of people standing in front of, of ICOM anywhere and saying hello help us we don't know where they are they don't know where we are and so we had to network and and stretch our network quite wide with the means that we that we had so you know facebook uh, web pages our contacts with uh, with our friends like anastasia and many others who remained in the ukraine to identify the needy at the same time we didn't have much money in, in fact almost none so we started to fundraise and we were quite successful thanks to the museum community abroad especially you know poland is offering a lot of different types of help so we were not ar running around with uh, with the plate you know at home but we were rather 
asking colleagues uh, further from 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 the from the war border to help us with that and it, it we were quite successful we organized uh, the whole process which you know in, consists of uh, the definition of the program of uh, specific contracts in Ukrainian and Poland for the grants of a committee which is Polish and Ukrainian and Anastasia Cherednichenko is part of that committee uh, that uh, awards the, the grants. The grants are on the level of uh, around 850 euros per month for three months for a person. So, so we want to guarantee the grantee a, a relative, you know, support for a quarter of a year and the committee met for the first time uh this week or last week i don't remember that in any case four grantees were already awarded these grants and we have new um the word was spread uh, around so we are getting now more and more you know questions to 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 to, to for, for, for help actually so um i think that we will be ready to answer your questions, Juliette, about how the French museums can help in uh, probably a week or two when we will have more people not only addressing us with uh, with you know with uh, 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 with a formula for 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 um, for a grant, but also people who will know better what their future is because um, it's still a very chaotic time as you. If you watch the news, you know that the eastern parts of the Ukraine, some cities such as Mariupol and, and, and others are basically raised to the ground. So there's no place to go back. And um, there are temporary buildings uh, established in, in, in cities like Lviv to, to welcome you know, some people who are fleeing from the east. But, for, but of course, you know, the needs are, are immense. So I think that in in a, a few weeks, a number of individuals will know what they are up to. That, for example, you know, it's very difficult to go back home because there is not much to go back to fast because there is no apartment, there is no house, there is nothing there. If they don't have a family in another city, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult. And, and then I think it will be the right time to think about moving to some other country for a, you know for for a temporary stay for for a grant etc 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 i think it is a bit too early to really expect uh th those refugees to to know what you know what awaits them uh, as the war is developing and you know that putin is is basically waging a total war so he's about destroying cities not not about you know, winning a war, but basically destroying the country. Um, and uh, we will be continuing with our uh, grant program. At the same time, all the material help is channeled through our partners, which is the National Institute of Heritage, which Juliette also and some of our uh, French and other colleagues from other countries know quite well. They are also involved in, in organizing the transports, etc. But most importantly, they are trying to scout out the needs in particular cities, not only in Lviv or in Kiev, not only in the big cities, but also in the provinces, where, you know, as, as um, our, our colleague was saying, you know, there is difficulties with transport, there's difficulties with any sort of uh, resources to, to protect uh, heritage, to protect icons in, uh, in, in churches, in Orthodox churches, and so forth and so forth. So, uh, it is good also to collaborate with them, and I'll be happy to provide information how to how to also communicate with them. But Juliette and, and Icom France knows that very well uh, to 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 make sure that the uh, right stuff arrives at the right address. And uh, I think if we we were promised another twenty grants from our colleagues in Great Britain, for which we were very helpful. A lot of countries helped, you know, Switzerland and France and Germany and so forth and so forth. So at the moment we have what we need, but uh, it's not going to be a short story. It's going to continue for uh, for a longer time, I'm afraid. And so we have to be prepared to to offer help uh, in an extended period of time. Thank you very much.
Merci, Piotr. On, on a bien compris, on Thank a bien entendu. Piotr. Uh, I think we uh, understood your message. We're working uh, over the long term here. And we are uh, here together trying to build something. And we're all very much aware that this, unfortunately, is likely to go on for a long time. So I think it's important that uh, you hear, uh, Piotr, Anastasia, Angelina, that you all hear about the potential help that we can provide from here. I think you've all already received some equipment and we will continue to hear, uh, to listen for your needs in terms of equipment. As Piotr said and others mentioned, there are financial donations coming in through different associations. I think we are also here to tell you how we can facilitate uh, the, the hosting of professionals who might want to come to our countries. Although uh, you told us that now might be a bit premature to ask this question. I still think that it's important uh, for us to let you know about what we can do. So I would like to hand over to Eleonore de la Birochette, who is the correspondent for the uh, PAUSE program in France. The PAUSE program is a program that is facilitating the uh, welcoming of artists who are applying for refugee status in France. And those can include museum professionals. They can uh, be eligible under these, uh, this funding. And I think it's very important uh, for you, uh, dear colleagues from Ukraine and Poland, it's important for you to be aware of what can be done in this respect. I think it's also important for our colleagues from, for, from French museums who might be uh, up for welcoming museum professionals to find out how in due time they, uh, they can benefit from this. Uh, you need to be aware that we are here to facilitate things and not to do them for you. So over to you, Eleonore. Thank you for joining us. So I'm going to carry on in French because my English is not that great. Uh, I represent the PAUSE program from the Collège de France, which, which supports scientists and artists who are at risk in their home countries. So we've created a special fund. We've created a dedicated fund supporting artists and art professionals impacted by the war in Ukraine. Our program offers three months uh, residencies within a French art organization for uh, artists and art professionals from Ukraine who would like to uh, come to France. The program includes a funding of up to 1,900 euros per month, which is paid to these professionals with additional support for access to housing and additional support when the people are uh, traveling with their family or children. We also have a program uh, for scientists. We've received over 200 applications to date. The fund for artists and art professionals opened a bit, launched a bit later on, uh, about a month ago, and so far we've received about 40 applications, including two professionals from Ukrainian museums. From the uh, Museum for the Arts, Bodan and Varvara Valenko from Kiev, and a professional from the uh, Contemporary Arts Museum of Odessa. What more can I tell you? Uh, I'm sorry, my colleague uh, Alisa Menchikova, uh, who's in charge of the Scientists Fund, uh, was unable to stay uh, because uh, she was going to a meeting. But if you would like to find out more, please do get back to me. I'll leave my uh, contact details in case you know anyone who might be interested. Or if you have any questions at all, please do get in touch. Thank you, Eleanor. I think it's important that both our uh, colleagues in Ukraine and yourself, Piotr, and uh, the representatives of museums in France are aware of this program. Uh, so can you, uh, Eleonore, please tell us a bit more and give us a few more details because 
what is important is to know how uh, to uh, go about it. We now know that there's this program out there. I'm sure there are many more, but so now uh, you, uh, you are experienced in delivering this program. We've checked with yourself and other people that this program is, uh, th this funding, this financial support can uh, be uh, can be delivered to museum professionals, although the program uh, mostly refers to artists, but I think it's important for you uh, to tell us, uh, give us a bit more detail about how it works, who needs to approach you with a request, do we need to, to, to approach you, or should it be our Ukrainian colleagues applying, should it, be, uh, should it come from the museums themselves? Um, there's always a point where things become urgent. And I think this is where uh, we, we need to be aware that there's no time to waste. So we uh, need you to give us very specific and very concrete information now that we're all together. And it's important for all the museums who are part of this meeting today can approach you to ask you the questions that uh, they have. in case any uh, any professionals might approach them uh, in need of being welcomed. Donc uh, dans le cadre de ce, de ce fonds d'urgence culture, c'est aux établissements français de candidater. In the context of the uh, culture fund, it's French uh, institutions that need to apply, French institutions that are recognized or subsidized by the French Ministry of Culture. We've got an online form on our platform with the necessary information about the applicant organization and uh, information about the uh, culture professional or the artist who is going to be welcomed in the context of this application. The institution needs to include a, a letter of commitment signed by its uh, chairperson or president. I uh, send the applications every week to the Ministry of Culture in France. They are then assessed both by the Ministry of Culture and our scientific com uh, committee, as well as the um, home uh, affairs ministry. It usually takes about three weeks to get a response to the uh, application from the different uh, decision making bodies. After these three weeks, if an application is successful, we will sign an agreement to fund the, uh, the hosting uh, uh, arrangement and the uh, host organization is commits to pay all of the money to the professional who is welcomed. I've been contacted by artists and uh, cultural professionals from Ukraine and also by uh, museums or uh, cultural organizations that don't know any uh, candidates for this program. So what I'm trying to do is to match up uh, artists or professionals with uh, organizations that are wanting to host them. Sometimes cultural organizations know some uh, professionals or artists who want to join their program and they can directly make the application themselves in that case. What else can I say about the program? The host uh, institutions are then responsible for enabling the artist or pro cultural professional to continue their professional practice within uh, the context of the institution and to provide support in finding uh, housing and residency permits. That's the, the program in, in broad terms. We uh, also have an ongoing uh, program uh, which runs uh, th through the year uh, uh, residency program and it's going to be uh, a program starting again in 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 june uh, where 70 uh, percent is funded and 30 percent is is paid by the host institution and we're going to try to uh, help our artists uh, who have benefited from the emergency uh, funding in order to then access the more ongoing residency program thank you very much eleanor Piotr, is this uh, information useful to you? 
is the fact that uh, the that you are welcoming and hosting so many refugees. Um, is, is it useful to hear about this program? Is Have you got any questions for Eleanor? And after hearing from you, I'll maybe give uh, one or two other people in the meeting the, the opportunity to ask some questions as well. But Piotr, over to you. Sure, sure. It's, it's very useful. Thank you very much. I already bookmark uh, your page. And what, what we do um, inevitably is, you know, I component became a kind of a hub of information coming from different directions and going into different directions. So we are creating a database of uh, opportunities and uh, help possibilities from different countries. And it's, it's very important to, to have this one as well. So I think, uh, you know, when people approach us, we are, we are um, of course, willing and, and sharing the information, what is available, where they can go. Uh, we have not yet seen many that would use it, but um, we do not um, track that much scholars uh, per se. We focus on museum professionals because also our means are quite limited. But whenever somebody is coming to ask to to us to 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 ask for assistance or know how, we are of course providing this. So so thank you once again, Eleonor. I I have I have all that information now. Thank you. Merci d'avoir réagi, Piotr, je, je, je le redis. Thank important. you very much for this response, Piotr. It's really important that everyone hears this. This program is open to all museum and professionals. It's not just for artists. That's a very important piece of information. And that's been confirmed to this evening. It's not the only uh, program. This is the program that we've invited today. There are other uh, mechanisms which might be available to host artists who are looking for a refuge, in particular the International City of Art. We've been in contact with them, but they've not been able to join us to tonight. If you want some information about this organization, we can put you in contact as well. I'd like to suggest uh, that we uh, hear from some of the museums who are represented on the meeting tonight. What questions would you like to ask uh, the PAUSE uh, programme? We also have representatives from the French Ministry of Culture who are on the meeting. So I'd very much like to hear from Claire Chastagnier if uh, she would like to speak uh, to us for a few minutes. Uh, obviously, you're not obliged to, but I'd be delighted to give you the opportunity to speak if you'd like to. And Claire, would you like to address the meeting? Looks like she doesn't want to, uh, but I'm going to open up the floor to, to anyone who'd like to, to speak. Uh, you, if you we might uh, perhaps just ask Anastasia to say again uh, what are the specific needs, the most useful materials and equipment, uh, because we probably can transport materials fairly easily to the Polish-Ukrainian uh, border. We've sent two trucks. We could probably send some more. So An Anastasia and Angelina, you shared uh, needs which we weren't necessarily specifically aware of before you spoke. In particular, you talked about video surveillance uh, systems. Uh, I hope I've understood that route. Also, uh, tools to help you to digitize your collections. And in the medium term, you asked uh, for support uh, in training. I'm not sure exactly how, perhaps Anastasia, uh, you could tell us a bit more, uh, the, some support in, in restoration and training. Perhaps I could ask you, uh, once again, Anastasia, to explain in a little bit more detail how you would see things in terms of training for uh, people to restore objects. Are you talking about something that could happen now or is that for later? Would you be able to tell us that? Yeah, OK, but someone, uh, I, I, I can see that uh, two people want to ask something.
Oui, d'accord, on va leur donner la parole maintenant. Et du coup... Yes, Anastasia, we'll maybe hear from them first of all. Uh, just okay. keep my question in, in mind, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Charles, let's uh, hear from you, Charles de Gentil. I only see one hand up. Uh, Charles de Gentil from Paris Musée. And then uh, Emily Girard, who is from uh, the Museum of European Civilizations in uh, Marseille. Charles, I've got a technical question uh, about the program. Our organization doesn't receive any sub subsidies from the French Ministry of Culture. So would we still be eligible to host artists? I'm afraid we're going to send that question to Fabien Marut from the uh, Ministry of Culture. So they're the ones who will confirm the eligibility of each uh, institution. I'd have to check for you. Yes, I understand the question, uh, says Juliette. So when Eleonore uh, and I were preparing the meeting, I asked her the same question. Are uh, museums that don't come under the French Ministry of Culture uh, eligible to benefit from the PAUSE program? programme? I'm not sure if that's necessarily clear. Uh, thank you to Charles for that question. It is an important question. Uh, Emily, uh, the floor is yours. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for this information that we've heard today. It's given us the opportunity to share uh, knowledge about needs and proposal. I've got an extremely practical question. I understood that with the pause program, you're working closely with the French Ministry of Culture. Is there a way of contacting the French Ministry in order to apply and say we as an institution are uh, ready to host a, a, a professional and, and give details of, of the, the project. Eleanor's uh, answer. Yes, you can absolutely uh, contact me and tell me about uh, the ability of your museum uh, to, uh, to host uh, people. I can contact different artists uh, if there's a interesting artistic or cultural project. For example, with uh, a network of art centers, we we work together to see which art centers in France were ready to host people. I put them in contact with artists in order to prepare applications for this program. Just coming back to the question of eligibility, I, I wanted to hand over to Fabien, who I think is still on the call. Uh, if there are uh, institutions here who aren't sure whether you'd be eligible, send me a message and I can uh, send it to my contact people at the uh, Ministry of Culture and I can find out whether your institution would be eligible or not. Thank you very much, Eleanor. It's a very direct answer and very precise answer, uh, which is relevant to many people. So I think I would encourage uh, you, if you would like to ask questions to our Ukrainian college, I think uh, Piotr has had to leave. Uh, he he was a uh, uh, he's been our intermediary, our, our, our go-between uh, in this situation. I'm going to hand over to Juliette Rollier Hanselman before we come back to Anastasia in a few moments, uh, if she's ready to uh, answer my question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm a restorer of uh, paintings and works of art in the uh, Rhone Alp region. I wanted to highlight the fact that we have a Bompard Association in, uh, in France, which sometimes works in foreign countries to train uh, restoration uh, professionals. We have a number of, of volunteers working in various countries and in uh, France. I have a uh, worked uh, on a number of restoration pro projects with volunteers and with students. I could uh, travel to train uh, people in restoring uh, paintings or murals or even uh, works of art in stone. So I, I'm also uh, keen to welcome refugees in my studio here. <laughs> the speaker was asking whether that was translated, but Juliet is reassuring her that uh, the interpre interpretation has taken place. The important thing to say, uh, Juliet, is that you include the information in the chat 
box, give your contact details uh, in the 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 chat box. Uh, Juliet says she's not very used to using it. So Juliet's explaining to her how she can find the the chat function and enter her contact details into that. She's just sp sp spelling out her, her email address so that Juliette Raoul can put it in. So J U L dot Europe at gmail dot com. Okay. So that email address should be appearing in the chat shortly. The speaker's saying, I can't see where the, uh, the chat zone is. Are there... Sorry, the, here's, the, here's the address um, of the speaker who's just talked about restoration, jul.europe at gmail.com. Are there any other concrete proposals or any other pieces of information which you would like to share with our colleagues during this meeting? Or are there any other questions that anyone would like to ask? Otherwise, I'm going to hand over to Anne-Laure uh, Rameau. Uh, she put a, a point in the chat uh, and she wanted to give a, a little bit of information about what Actually, she had some questions, sorry, to ask about uh, about the needs and the things that were sent from France to, to, to Ukraine. You can read her question in, in the chat. She says, we have got a lot of questions about the size of wood crates you need. The dimensions we have are crates for paintings, but some museums gave different sizes. Anne-Laure uh, Rameau is from the organization Bouclier Bleu France. Over to you, Anne-Laure. Anne-Laure is asking, can we hear you? And for everyone is nodding. I just wanted to talk about uh, what we've sent. Two trucks have already set up. A third truck, uh, I've been told the third truck is full uh, we haven't got a departure date but it will uh, it will be some time uh, next week it should set off on the 2nd of may and arrive on the 4th we're in discussions uh, for a fourth uh, convoy a lot of uh, proposals have been made by museums in different regions around france uh, in the south of France, in towns around Lyon and Grenoble. We'll have some from the east of France and some more uh, donations from the Normandy region. So we've had a lot of interest from uh, French museums. My specific question is that we were asked for wooden crates, wooden chests uh, with dimensions which seem to correspond to paintings but my colleagues are donating uh, cases and chests of different sizes. Uh, so I'm just wondering about what was sent uh, and whether it has been useful. Yet explains, and Laure uh, arrived a bit late to the meeting and she mentions that uh, Anastasia, you, you told the meeting uh, that uh, there were some very specific needs uh, apart from uh, the needs that were already known. So systems for video surveillance, uh, scanners and uh, digitization equipments and other uh, transport. Uh, one, of, one of you talked about uh, transport equipment vehicles. I don't know if we can send some microbuses or minibuses that were mentioned. But perhaps Anastasia, if you could uh, just tell us again about the specific needs uh, and maybe Anastasia or Angelina uh, could speak to us more specifically when you talked about restoration and training in restoration. Tell us a bit more about what you were thinking. Are you thinking of people who would come to Ukraine to give trainings or are you thinking of 
systems uh, for online uh, training like Zoom, uh, for example? Could it be useful uh, for us to provide uh, training in teleconference form like this? That's a question that I would like to ask you. I can see, sorry, that uh, Joanna uh, Linsog uh, wanted to uh, speak. I'm going to hand over to her uh, it, right now, but after that, we'll come to uh, Anastasia or Angelina. Angelina, est-ce que vous voulez prendre la parole? Angelina, would you like to uh, make a comment? Oui, pardon, c'est sans doute moi qui ne suis pas. Yes, pas sorry. Uh, perhaps I was a bit unclear earlier. You've mentioned uh, your needs in terms of training, in terms of restoring uh, your pieces. So, how do you see this working? Do you think that these needs? Uh, in terms of training could include sessions we could organize with your people uh, via video conference. Do you think this is uh, something that would require uh, for us to come to your country? Uh, earlier, a colleague from Rampart uh, offered to come and visit, but do you think we could set up some sessions? Uh, is there anything that could be useful to you uh, with respect to the needs you uh, shared with us uh, in terms of training, restoring, uh, making connections with uh, restora restoring specialists. Uh, is, it, is it clearer now? in different directions, in different museum specialisms, certainly also as well as to communicate in the museum uh, professional questions in the future. It will be very, very important, certainly. Thank you. Um, OK, I've got more questions. So concretely, what do you mean by cooperation? Do you think it would be useful for us to organize cooperations between museums through uh, virtual platforms like we're doing now. Anastasia, what do you think? Um, it, 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 actually, it's uh, I mentioned about this restoration, and I think it uh, could be uh, both. It would be uh, very useful and um, on a Zoom platform uh, programs, uh, for example, and also if uh, some uh, professional um, could come in Ukraine, it's also uh, uh, be useful for us, and we uh, we can see. Uh, we actually uh, are thinking about the, uh, such program, and we can um, in few days uh, to send uh, some some questions with uh, some um, actually to, uh, about these programs. What what actually we need. Uh, and um, uh, I think Merci just... beaucoup. C'est très important que vous disiez ça. Okay, thank you. It's very important uh, to hear and, this. Uh, as, sorry, can I uh, also say about this uh, wood boxes and uh, uh, thank you uh, and uh, about the cases? Uh, this is why we create this platform. Uh, that uh, donors, uh, Ukrainian uh, companies or um, uh, European museums can uh, can offer some uh, goods for, for this pro platform, and our Ukrainian museums uh, they can uh, to apply with their needs. It would be more specific and more uh, concrete, uh, concrete. Uh, actually asking and uh, if you don't mind uh, thank you so much for uh, this asking uh, i can send the uh, name of programs what we need about restoration thank you so much
Merci, euh, merci beaucoup, euh, Anastasia. C'est une demande. Thank you, Anastasia. This is a new uh, request. I don't think we can commit to send out any professionals for the moment, but we could potentially organize uh, some uh, sessions uh, on using Zoom, the Zoom platform, uh, including training sessions and support with restoration. This, I think, is something we could organize. I'm now going to hand over to Joanne and to Pauline. Good evening, Joanne Linskog. I'm in charge of the Fine Arts Museum in Nice. So thank you for this presentation on the different options we have to help our colleagues in Ukraine. I understood that for the moment, uh, few people had uh, been identified. So we need to get in touch with associations such as Solidarité Ukraine that works in Nice. We do have a lot of refugees in Nice because there was already quite a sizable Ukrainian community before the war in Nice. So, and we will uh, probably contact the PAUSE program. I wanted to react to what our colleague from Bouclier Bleu said regarding sending out shipping materials. Uh, and, um, I was wondering if we could bring back the trucks, loads the trucks when they drive back. Uh, so have uh, we ever mentioned the um, evacuation of pieces, art pieces? I'm not sure if this has been discussed already. Nice has 10 museums and a number of us have asked ourselves, is there anything we can do in terms of welcoming art pieces? Is this something we want to do? Is it possible? Are there already uh, works of art being shipped from Ukraine? Yes, I'm going to answer this question. Thank you, Joanne. Yes, this is a question that occurred to us uh, from very early on. So to answer your question very concretely, hosting uh, works of art from Ukrainian museums in France uh, brings up all sorts of different issues. Of course, uh, what we're doing now is shipping materials, not works of art, so or museum pieces. Uh, Claire Chassani will tell you more about this, but we've already had uh, conversations with the Department of Culture of Ukraine. And of course, things are evolving fast, but this goes way beyond the scope of what we are organizing at the moment. I'm sure Sophie de Lepierre uh, will confirm. Do, do, do speak out if you have something to comment. But uh, if we brought in museum pieces into France, this would mean uh, setting up intergovernmental agreements and signing uh, conventions that that would need to that might be on the agenda later on but this uh, for the moment this is beyond the scope of what we can do at the moment on a platform such as this one and this is not what we are proposing to do for the moment uh, Claire, sophie if you would like to comment on this specific point you're welcome to do so it's a very good question it's very it's a clever question but of course the trucks do not drive back empty. I can guarantee that uh, the Chenu trucks. I would like to thank Chenu once again because without this logistical cooperation, we wouldn't have been able to set up this program. They're transiting through uh, Germany. Chenu has outposts in Germany. So uh, the question of empty trucks is not really an issue, but the question of bringing pieces into France uh, would involve intergovernmental agreements. Sophie de Lepierre, uh, and then Pauline, perhaps we could hear from you. Sophie, if you'd like to speak. Yes, uh, you've actually answered on my behalf. Uh, again, thank you to Ecom France for organizing this meeting. Hi, Angelina and Anastasia. And hello to all uh, the colleagues who are here today. Just uh, regarding uh, the uh, outgoing museum pieces, uh, from the 24th, uh, together with institutions like UNESCO and Blue Shield, of course, 
we've asked ourselves about evacuation right away. And as soon as we started sending out trucks with equipment, of course, we asked ourselves about shipping pieces back. Uh, but as our president mentioned, this work goes way beyond what an NGO could do, uh, shipping uh, art pieces outside a country truly has a, a heavy diplomatic uh, implication. So for the moment, um, the uh, Ukrainian, uh, this depends on uh, the Ukrainian ministry and it will always remain in their hands. And if needs be in the future, this if this were to be done, it would require bilateral agreements. But uh, what can we do as museum professionals, as members of ICOM and as members of the museum community? Well, this is what we have done instinctively. Uh, you mentioned that we do have storage capacity and good storage capacity, and it is important to have this information. So if we do get to the unfortunate stage where we do have to evacuate works of art, it will be useful to have this information very quickly because we will need to identify the countries that will be able to uh, welcome. Uh, yes, uh, Anastasia, as you said, this is the sole responsibility of the Ministry of Culture of Ukraine, of course. All we can do is be prepared uh, if potentially this decision is made, ultimately we uh, want to ensure that we are ready to welcome these works of art in good conditions. But we are not there yet for the moment. Uh, the Ukrainian government has been very clear from the start. Uh, for the moment, this is not the objective. What we're uh, aiming for for the moment is the preservation of these collections on site, uh, which is uh, and we're trying to work with professionals who left their country, as ICOM Poland is doing, people who've uh, left their country with their families. So, of course, I do understand your question, and it's very legitimate. Uh, this is something we've thought about, we've been thinking about, but for the moment, uh, we, what we're trying to do is to listen to our Ukrainian colleagues, to understand what they need, and to implement the best response possible. So here you go. Uh, it's it's in the hands of governments at this stage. And then when it's in the hands of museums, I'm sure that the community of museums will respond uh, as it has done in the past. In terms of uh, supplying materials and welcoming people for the moment. Uh, going back to uh, the dis discussion we've had today, I wanted to be very clear. The idea is not at all uh, about attracting people into other countries. Of course, people have fled the country and museum professionals so far have been women with their children. Of course, uh, Poland has been uh, the first country that's been affected and it's been uh, very fast in uh, focusing on museum professionals because they knew that this was where they needed to channel their resources. They haven't been alone in doing that. For instance, we, we're in touch with ICOM in the Czech Republic and in um, Latvia. But the point is not so much about thinking who can we bring over. The question today is more about there's already Ukrainians in Germany, in France, in the US. And it would be interesting for ICOM to be able to support these people using their networks, identifying who's left and trying to best match their presence with their local, uh, their, 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 the, the national committee that can help them. So it's not about moving people around, people are not things, but uh, the challenge we're having right now uh, internationally is saying we've got museums who are prepared to welcome uh, people, professionals, and we know that some people have had to flee their country. And what ICOM is trying to do is to match uh, potentialities and needs. And I think this is why uh, today's meeting is very interesting. So thank you, Juliette, for organizing this. 
Thank you, Sophie. So as you all understood, Sophie is in charge of uh, ICOM International. Uh, we are the French committee and she works for the international committee. So thank you, Sophie, for these details uh, regarding uh, the, the pieces themselves. Uh, I think it was important to clarify this. And of course, this is something we've had in mind from the very start convoy that we sent out to Ukraine. We, we had uh, suggestions uh, regarding uh, the repatriation of museum pieces. But as we said, it's not in our hands. It's all the responsibility of the Ukrainian ministry. Of course, we need to be careful of uh, our own goodwill. And we, uh, Sophie, it's important that you reminded us of this. This is something we can see from listening to our colleagues, including Piotr and uh, our friends Anastasia and Angelina. The point is not about bringing people over at any cost. And it's not either about uh, trying to, uh, to, to, to support people in spite of their intentions, but it's about making sure that we have systems in place, making sure we keep everyone informed of the, the existing uh, programs that are in place to support and welcome people. We need our colleagues in Ukraine to know that we are available to help uh, welcome people in the best conditions possible for professionals who might want to come over and be looking for work, people who might be in a, a more favorable situation. Earlier today, I heard something that's very important and interesting, I think, uh, regarding this need for training and perhaps the, uh, the possibility of working together to organize a remote training on issues to do with restoring that would be uh, specifically tailored for museums. So we can really act as an interface. We do not deliver anything ourselves, but we are trying to be an effective uh, interface. Pauline, over to you. Sorry, I made you wait so long. Uh, we've got 15 minutes left to go. I promise to our interpreters we wouldn't we wouldn't go over time. So please do raise your hand if you would like to ask a question. So Pauline, over to you. Can you hear me okay? I'm in my car. Yes, we can hear you, Pauline. So uh, just like my uh, colleague who works in restoration, I'm an independent worker and I am welcoming Ukrainian refugees, I realized that we uh, need to change jobs when uh, when you move to a different country, you need to find a different job. So I have a small flat next to my studio where I can welcome one person. So it's quite basic, but I wanted to offer training. For, sorry, can you repeat this? Because uh, the, the line dropped. <laughs> I wanted to offer training and work placements for people who are moving here and who want to change jobs. And depending on the resources we have, there might be a need in terms of restoring. Uh, I uh, work, I, I'm based uh, in the province province, so I'm not in Paris, and I'm sure there's quite a few of us who uh, live all over France, and I'm sure we could set up a network to welcome people who work in the same field as us, so art restorers, uh, the refugees I'm welcoming at the moment, some of them are painters, and they are keen to learn uh, some, some skills that they can use when they uh, come back to Ukraine. So I'm not an actual training body, but I was wondering if ICOM could perhaps identify uh, like a map uh, with people who could welcome refugees, uh, for example, for one day per week or uh, like a work placement, a more extensive work placement to train people who uh, have expressed the need to be trained. Thank you for your comments, Pauline. Uh, I will uh, later hand over to Arina so she can tell us more about her question. I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm not sure we can draw an actual map, but I think based on your 
uh, propositions, your proposal, I think this is something we are, we will be bearing in mind, and it is important. I'm going to ask uh, my question again, so I'll try to rephrase it. I think, uh, what Anastasia was uh, and Angelina were asking for was how we could uh, either by traveling over, which seems difficult right now, or by organizing online training sessions. Pauline, I'm sure you understand that as of today, our colleagues from Ukraine are saying uh, we've got lots of refugees in Poland, but we can't tell at this stage who might be interested in joining such or such museum or such or such studio. So this is something we will know in time, but it's going to take a while. Uh, now, I would like to hand over to Irina. Irina, you wrote in the chat uh, asking about the possibilities for welcoming professionals with ICOM. Uh, well, the answer is no, we are an interface. Our role is not to welcome people, but rather to create connections between museums and professionals who might need to be welcomed. But then the, the second part of your question uh, seems quite important. Could you tell me a bit more about this? looks like we've lost Arena. Have we lost Arena? I just want to read out what she put in the chat. She says, if Ukrainians have a pro professional training in the protection of uh, cultural heritage, uh, she then asks something that I wasn't uh, sure that what she was, was trying to say, but it looks like uh, she's not on the meeting anymore. So unfortunately, we won't be able to clarify that. Uh, Julie Four is asking who can money be sent to, and the answer is to ICOM Poland. And there's a link that's been sent in the chat. Thank you uh, to my colleagues who are working just next door from where I am. Uh, they've sent uh, a link to the uh, specific web page that was created by uh, ICOM in order to facilitate the transfer of financial donations to ICOM Poland via ICOM International, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Sophie will, uh, Sophie will correct me if I'm wrong there. Can you all see the chat function? Has everyone noted this uh, web link, which will lead you to where you can make donations? And I hope everyone has understood that this is going to go via ICOM uh, Poland. Question from uh, Julie Faure. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, individual donations, but donations from uh, institutions and authorities. Is it the same link? Yes. Are you talking about financial gifts? Answer. Uh, I, I don't see why there would be any reason why this uh, fundraising effort would not be relevant for gifts from uh, local authorities or institutions. They could also use this site to make a donation, I think. Is there anyone else who would like to ask a question? Is there anyone else who would like to speak, uh, clarify something, offer, offer any services? If this isn't the case, let me tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to invite Angelina and Anastasia, if they wish to say a few words to wrap up the meeting, just in conclusion, if, if you would like to, of course. Otherwise, what we're going to do is keep all the information that has been shared in the chat. We'll try to 
uh, put them on our website in some uh, useful form. Uh, Icon France and the Bouclier Bleu organization that Anne Lorameau is here representing. Uh, I've uh, really wanted to congratulate her on how uh, effective her organization has been in surveying the different needs and the different offers. We'll put all this information together, we'll put it in a table and make it available on the Icon France website. And it will also be on the Bouclier Bleu website. And when uh, this information is not confidential, we'll communicate it also via uh, social media. And Laura is very good at that. And Laura says, for those who didn't see it in the chat function, many people talked about uh, uh, whether they could host professionals or host collection. Currently, this isn't something that we're doing, but in our uh, list of proposals within ICOM, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll list such offers. If uh, uh, those of you who've said things orally, who said, uh, for example, I've got a workshop where I can host uh, two people, uh, we won't necessarily be able to get back to you in the name of Icon France. Unfortunately, we've lost Anne-Laure Ramo. We've lost uh, Anne-Laure Ramo's sound, unfortunately. I think I can guess what she was trying to say. There won't be necessarily an immediate feedback, but the information uh, will be be kept and stored and can be reused uh, when the time comes. Sorry, I have turned off my cam camera. Angelina, would you like to say a, a little uh, word to conclude? Anastasia, would you like to say anything to wrap up the meeting? Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to, um, to say thank you so much for your support and uh, for such uh, pay attention for for us and for this war situation, which is horrible. Thank you so much. And uh, also, if we collect uh, some um, database uh, for people who, for museum professional for restoration who uh, willing to create such program, uh, it could be uh, on use uh, on Zoom platform or Microsoft platform uh, based. It would be very great, just great. Thank you so much. I think it's very important. Uh, we've noted what you've said. It would be interesting to hear from you exactly what types of restoration you're interested in, what objects uh, you would need to restore. But we are very keen to work together with you. We are already in contact. We're in contact several times a week with you and with Piotr, so we can work together to understand the specific details of your needs and we can uh, contact some of the restoration professionals who've been on the meeting today and others in training organizations that we have in France and I'm sure that they will uh, be very keen to respond to what you've requested. There's a question in the chat, are there any needs for preventive conservation? Yes, my name is Claire Léger from the Lot and Garonne region of France. From the start of the meeting, people have been talking about uh, restoration and we've been talking about restoration professionals, but do you need, uh, do you have any needs in urgent preventive conservation, whether it's packaging, conditioning, uh, in order to uh, preserve collections or uh, or, or, or furniture items. There are training programs for Bouclier Bleu that we could use and adapt very quickly uh, and uh, help uh, to train uh, people in how to secure and protect uh, works of art. 
prior to restoration. I imagine that it's not possible to restore everything right now. So the idea is to try to stabilize uh, items, graphic arts and uh, archives and so on, uh, pending a future restoration process. So is that a useful need? Thank you very much, Claire. I think that your proposal um, has been heard. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak before we end this meeting? Would anyone else like to add something? From our point of view, uh, we're going to work uh, closely with Bouclier Bleu, with, with ICOM International, in order to uh, present uh, what has been expressed during this meeting in order to inform the community of museum professionals of the uh, new needs that have been very clearly expressed uh, this evening. Uh, we've heard about uh, video surveillance equipment and uh, the support in training in restoration. We've heard these needs very clearly, and we're going to work to try and help you and support you in this. Is that a good place to finish perhaps tonight? Anastasia and Angelina, I would just like to speak on behalf of all of my colleagues to say once again how much we stand shoulder to shoulder with you. We are by your side in our hearts and in our minds at, at all times. You can count on us. Thank you very much to all the colleagues so who have connected.